scripture lesson this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 18. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, his work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is sacred, and you are that temple. Do not deceive yourselves. If any one of you thinks he is wise by the standards of this age, he should become a fool so that he may become wise. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Millions of people continually travel the world to see magnificent edifices built to glorify God, either of our Christian, Judaic, or other faith individuals. They are built with the intent of standing the test of time. Astronauts in the earliest days of space exploration told us only two humanly created individual things are seen from space on the face, the Great Wall of China and the pyramids. How many people travel to embrace the pyramids, the Taj Mahal, the Cathedral of Notre Dame, or temples throughout Asia? According to statistics last year, 3.6 million tourists went to see the remnants of the temple in Jerusalem. Over 12 million people went to see the Egyptian pyramids. Humanity likes to admire what it is capable of producing. During the days that the Bible was written, God's people were also big on building temples. And then when it came to the temple in Jerusalem, requiring the faith community to show up at least once a year. The concept and the rationale was simple. This is God's house. It is therefore where God resides. Want to be close to God? Get yourself to temple. This was the norm. And not so long ago, radicals decided to destroy another kind of temple, the temple of economic strength. And we remember the date, 9-11. We commemorated it once again this past Tuesday. Their belief was, destroy the financial temple and destroy their economy, and thus destroy their nation. Temples throughout history are seen by many people in many different ways. An interesting counterpoint to all of this is found in the words of the Apostle Paul who tells us, don't you know? that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is sacred and you are that temple. For individuals who believe that Allah would eternally bless them, there will be no paradise, no nirvana, no virgins awaiting to take care of their fleshly desires. The only thing awaiting them was God's judgment, for there were thousands bearing God's spirit who were intentionally struck down. So the text, in a paraphrased way, is simply saying, wise up, as Jesus would say, as you have done to others, so shall it be done to you. But let's take a direct look at the broader essence of the text. The Apostle Paul speaks of building on the foundation that Christ has already laid. 
If we think about it for a moment, we will realize each of us are builders of our own faith journey. The foundation Christ has laid is the assurance of our salvation, already bought and paid for fully at Calvary. But how we build on that foundation is up to each of us. There's a story of a man who spent his entire life as a supervisor building very expensive homes for very rich, for very rich clientele of one particular well-known housing developer. The developer himself loved to be a part of the start of each new home. For every start, the developer would oversee the digging out and the placement of the footer and seeing that the foundational floor was poured. The rest of the house was left to his trusted employee. He never appeared on the site again. Now his foreman, who had worked for this company for over 40 years, was nearing the age of 65. For years, he was angered that he would build some of the finest houses for others, while he and his wife lived in a modest two-bedroom home with no real amenities whatsoever. He decided to himself, I can cut some corners and save a bundle for my retirement on this last house. The developer never sets foot on the property once the footers dug out and the floor was finished. So he decided to start cutting corners. Rather than poured concrete basement wall with steel rebar reinforcement, he would use cement block. Rather than framing the house in two by sixes to make a more energy efficient with double the insulation value, he would frame it out of two by fours like all the other cheap contractors. He would plumb with PVC instead of copper. Rather than triple thermopane wood windows, he would use double hung aluminum. Instead of a three and a half car garage, there would be a single car unit with a carport on the side. Every shortcut he could possibly take on this structure, he took. And with each passing day, that foreman would become happier and happier as he was planning what he would do with all that money in his retirement. On the inside, he cut an equal amount of corners. He would use vinyl flooring instead of granite tile. He would use carpeting instead of hardwoods. He would use 3 8 drywall instead of half inch for mica countertops instead of either granite or marble and a small artificial insert with thin imitation clay tile attached around the edges rather than a full masonry stone fireplace. There would be a blacktop drive rather than concrete entry with custom brick inlaid design trim. As it neared completion, almost two-thirds of the full value of that house was in the pocket of that construction foreman. Finally, the day of completion came. The foreman appeared at the corporate office and he handed over the keys. And as he came in the door, he noticed there was a huge party going on. And he said, what's up? And they said, aren't you retiring this month? And he said, yes. And they said, we're throwing a retirement party for you. And he says, well, that's pretty nice. And there were gifts, there were presents, there was a great cake, there was a gold watch. And at the very end, the owner, that developer, came up to him. And he said, you know, you have labored for me for 40 years. And I know I haven't been the easiest guy to get along with. But I want you to know how appreciative I am of all that you have done for me. And with that, he reached into his pocket and handed him the keys to the house he had just built. This is what the passage is talking about. Each of us are that foreman. Each of us who claim the salvation of Christ in our lives are building on that foundation 
that Christ has already laid and made sure. And verse 13 says it all. His work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. As Christians, our work will be shown for what it is. Matthew 6.20 says, But store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. So how do some of us cut corners? Some believe you can be a good Christian, pleasing in God's sight, but remain out of fellowship. Some believe you can be a good Christian, but not have a developing, maturing prayer life. Some believe you can be a good Christian and spend little to no time at all in daily devotions. Some believe you can be a good Christian, but never speak to others about your faith. Some believe you can be a good Christian, but never offer your God-given talents and skills to the church or to others who might be in need of them. Some believe they can be a good Christian, but never lend their time to any ministry. Some believe they can be a good Christian, but never seriously consider their financial offerings in light of scriptural teaching. Some believe a lot of things a lot of wrong things. And that's what this passage is about. The question is, are we believing the right things? In our final verse from the text, Paul says, do not deceive yourselves. If any one of you thinks he is wise by the standards of this age, he should become a fool so that he may become wise. When we are in Christ, we are a new creation. Knowing and understanding this truth offers us an abundance of potential to lead us to greater truths that can be known but not always seen. This is the blessing and the assurance that comes through increasing our faith by drawing closer to the developer of all creation. Yes, we are the foreman of our lives and of our destiny, and the choice is ours. But when we are truly in Christ, we may discover much more than we ever possibly imagined. If we remember but one thing to contemplate from this time that we've already shared together, let us remember this. You are God's temple. And God's spirit lives in you. Let us pray. Our Lord, we give you thanks for the reminder that each of us have the potential of doing and becoming and realizing so much more. Yes, our schedules are full. Our calendars are booked. We feel at times overspent. Enable us to set our priorities in ways that are pleasing to you. Enable us to order our lives in ways that complement the presence of your spirit within us. Enable us to be your presence to the world about us, recognizing that each and every one of us are living temples of your spirit, both now and in the days to come. Amen. Mm -hmm.